All right, hello. So welcome to how to make an animation with Synfix Studio. And Synfix Studio is a free program which you can get. It's you can do a lot of things that you can do with Toon Boom, but the difference is, is that Synfix is free and it's not illegal to steal. <laughs> So if you go to simfig.org and you can actually go to the download page, you click on that link, it'll take you down. And you can buy the stable version or the development version. The developed version has more features. And if you click on the documentation tab on the top, you actually get a lot of the more details of, of all the tools that and features that Synfig offers. But for now, let, I'm, what I'm gonna teach you is basically the basic. And then we're going to make a basic animation. Let me show you uh, the different parts of the pro program. So right there in the middle is the canvas. The canvas, and that's where you're gonna see your animation. And so on the left side is the toolbox, similarly like what you have in Photoshop or in GIMP. And then, and then right there is where you can find the information and the different options for the different tools. On the bottom is the timeline, which you, which is where you edit the animation, and you kind of, and that's when you get, you use it during the animation part. And on the bottom right, right there is, is the different layers, similarly what you have in Photoshop and the groups. And, and if you look on the other side of the timeline, on the bottom left, you have the options for the layers. So. So you can go ahead and, and provide more information about each layer. All right, let's get started. And so we're going to zoom in into the tool, into the tool, um, the toolbox. And realistically, with Synfig, you only need two tools. Everything else is extra. You need the clicker tool and the polygon tool. Right there, the polygon tool. And those are the old, the two tools that you need to make a good professional animation. Everything else is just for it's it's either for to fix mistakes that you've already made, or it's extra stuff. So like shading and stuff. Everything else you don't need. You don't need the circle tool. You don't need the star tool. You don't need the square tool. You just need the polygon tool and the pointer tool, and maybe the text tool if you want to add a text or like the title. So the pointer and the the polygon tool is the only tools that you really need to make an animation. So now we're going to use the polygon tool and what we're going to do is we're going to make an animation of a circle. All great YouTube animators start off with making a circle. Now I apologize if, I'm, if, I, if my thing is acting a little slow. The thing is that I'm, I'm running the recorder and the thing at the same time. So with the polygon tool, you must make three points in order for it to make a shape. I know it doesn't look like a circle, it looks like a triangle, but we're going to fix that now. And each layer comes with the outline layer, which, the, which gives it the black outline, as you can see. And you can toggle it with the check mark, the visibility. So you can turn it on and off with the, with the little check mark. And of course you have the region, which is the fill, which is the white thing. If you click on the little green icon there that looks like a folder, you create a group. And basically what you want to do is you want to make a group out of those two objects. And usually when you animate, you want to make it with the... You use the group. And so I, what I did was I moved all the vertexes to the center by, se selecting, by selecting all the layers and basically putting it right in the middle. You don't need the move tool, you don't need the rotation tool. All you need is basically when you click the group the group layer, you're going to have this option. So the orange is the orange circle is the square. The red one that um, makes it slanted. The ye the yellow one gives that squish effect and the and the blue one is the rotation tool. That's all you need. You don't need to mess with the toolbox. So and that's all in one layer. Now, if you click on the orange dot, a little, and you drag out, you you see a little yellow dot come out, and that's how you can make your curve. So now we're gonna turn this triangle into a circle. Now, once you create your shape, you can delete the third vertex, 
it might be easier for you to manage with or without the ver third vertex depending on your drawing skills. But basically when you make the polygon it must have three points. But once you make the polygon and you start stretching out those curves you can delete the third the third point if you want to. And of course with the polygon tool you can have more than three points. That looks good. Looks like a nice circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact the imperfectness of the circle actually gives it a little bit of a personality. And I think just crashed. Okay, so now we're back. Make sure we save it. File, you click on the file tab on the top and you click on save. And now you click on region and on the left side where the info for the, for the layer, you can click on color and you click on the little white box and you can change the color. My favorite color is green so we're going to be using green. But feel free to do it whatever color you want. I selected all the vertex again by right clicking the group, says select all child, and and, and I, I just kind of click and drag to select all the vertexes and put, I'm just rearranging it back in the middle. It's an unnecessary step but it's a little more easier to, to arrange things when everything is right in the middle. So that when you move your group, the circle moves along with the group. I'm sorry if I'm going a little too fast, but feel free to rewind and slow down uh, if, if, you, if you feel like you need to catch up. Right now I'm just setting it into place and preparing where we're going to make our bouncing ball animation. If you can make a bouncing ball, after that, once you learn how to make the cutout stuff, you can make anything. If you click on Campus and Properties, you can see you can rearrange the, the, the width and the height. Uh, I'm what, uh, 420 I believe is a six, uh, 360p video. Uh, I'm going to change it to a 1080p video so I get that HD. I left it at 72 uh, resolution, but you can change it to 300 if you really want that crisp. But it's a bouncing circle. I'm gonna leave it at HD at 72. It's it's perfect for what we're going to do. Now, if you look on the bottom right there, where where I circled, you can see a little green man. Right now, we're in drawing mode, but if you click on it, it turns into a running man. So that means we're in animating mode. So now, with your group selected, the group selected, you're going to click on the green circle and you're going to move it and make and make sure you're in the frame between 0 and 24 you can actually change the frames per second but we're not going to do that so in between the frame 0 and frame 24 right in the middle you're, we're going to move it down there we go on frame 24 we're going to move it back up on the halfway point between four, 24 and 48, we're going to move it back down. And, be, and on frame 48, we're going to move it back up. And there we have a simple draw, uh, animation. And now you can see that you have the play tool, the, the dots showing where you animated, and the, and the timeline which you can click and drag between the animations. Right now, I'm editing it by adding a splash effect. You can do that with with the with the with the yellow part of the group. And basically, every time the, it hits the floor, we're going to have a squash effect. And that's one of the one of the most important one of the most important twelve principles of animation. And you can look it up online, the principles of animation. But what we're doing is what we're doing is, is instead of having a boring circle, we're we're adding personality to the circle. We're bringing the circle to life. And I, I forgot to draw what I was doing here, but basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm applying another uh, aspect of the of the principles of animation. So what I'm doing is instead of having a zigzag like that, I'm I, I'm doing a curve. So instead of having a boring zigzag zigzag, it's going to have a, a arc like that, and it's gonna. It's going to give it a little bit more personality and make it more realistic. And you can do that by between the frames that we have created, like especially between 24 and the half point of 24, we, you, can, you can move it slightly to the, 
to the opposite direction so then it can create an arc. How uh, things look good. You click on the little running man again, it's gonna take you back to drawing mode. And now the great thing about Synfig and having everything in the group is that if you ever decide that you want the circle to look different, you can click on the animating tool and it takes you back to drawing mode. So now you can edit the circle without ruining the animation. And now look, the, the man is no longer running, it's green, that means we're in drawing mode. Now within the group, you can actually click on the outline and it's something that I should have done before that I realized. The, the, the outline looks a very thin. So what we're going to look for, if you scroll up and down in the, in the info box, is basically we're going to look for the outline width. You click on the number, and now you can have a thicker outline. There you go. Now doesn't that more, look more cartoony? Now what we're going to do next is we're going to do shading. And this is the time where we use the circle, the square, the star tool, and also the polygon tool. If we need to make a custom thing. You should only use the circle and square tool when you want to do shading. And so you can you can move around the circle. We're adding a white circle and it comes with a, a, a funny like soft edge, which is good for our shading. But we're going to edit that later on. So now make sure that the circle is inside the group. The green thing is also to move just like the group and the blue thing is to make it bigger or smaller and that's with the circle selected. You can make it big, make it small, etc. etc. Now in the option toolbox we're going to obviously change the color. Um, this is where the art comes in in animation. So. What I'm, do what I'm doing is basically I'm going to pick a, a light green so it fades into the, into the circle very well. There it goes. And depends with each color, your color might be different, but I chose a light green with the, dark, with the darker green. So it gives it that, it looks like a light is hitting it from the top right angle. And if you look in the box, you see a little option that, that's called feather. That gives it the soft edge, similarly like Photoshop, if you ever used Photoshop or GIMP before. And we're going to make it the, the circle even softer. I applied five, but I, I did a big circle. Your numbers might be different, so don't copy me exactly. But I, I, did, I ended up seeing that five wasn't enough, so I decided to change it to 10. There we go. Now it looks very soft and it looks like it has a light hitting the, the circle. And now we're going to use the polygon tool and we're going to make a banana shape on the, on the opposite side of the light in order to indicate darkness. And this is going to really elevate our, our bouncing ball animation to the next level. Instead of looking like a, a bouncing circle, it's going to look like a bouncing ball. Now of course it, ca it came with an outline with the polygon tool, so we de I deleted the outline and now I'm changing the, 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 the shape into like a, a dark blue as, as it kind of like gives it like a cartoony shade. Increase the feather and now it looks soft and you can do that with any other polygon object too. Obviously we want, we want our ball to be solid because, because a ball is a solid object but with, when it comes to shading, you want that feather look. So you always have to edit that feather info in the layer, in the layer, in the layer panel info. Adjusting the circle, and the great thing is you can you can adjust the object if you're not happy with it, as long as you're in drawing mode. So as long as the the man, the little man on the bottom right is green, you can edit the the shape, make some adjustments. And now if you look at here in the info box, I, I selected the circle and if you look in the info box, it says amount and says one. So that's like the opacity within Photoshop or GIMP if you ever use that. So one equals 100% and so we're going to do like a, a 70%. Let's see how that looks. 
And of course, I did the same thing with the with the darkness. I'm I'm speeding parts of the video so that so that we can get on it. Cause if I were to do a regular speed, it would be like half an hour video. All right. So if you go into properties and you, and you click on M, uh, campus info, you can you can change you click on the time box and you can change the end time. And what you want to do, since our animation is 48 frames, you want to do it 49 frames. Add the extra frame. Usually when it comes to animation, you want to add an extra frame at the end, just in case. As a break, as you're looping, if you want to loop the animation especially. Now if you go to File, Render, you can click on Render, go to Target, GIF, G-I-F, and on the settings, the first box gives you the quality. You can do 1 through 9, 9 being the highest quality. I decided to go with 5 because it's a bouncing ball. It doesn't have that much detail in it. Make sure that the that the image and the time is correct. The, if it's the campus and it's doing the full 49 frames. Now a little warning, once you click the render button, it's going to uh, start not responding. Just leave it alone. And if it still is not responding, what, then what you can do is you can break up the animation in half and then put it together in like Windows Maker and Windows Movie Maker. And now we have the finished results after we click the render button and this is what our animation looks like. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.